Hello and welcome to PB Newscast. I'm Phil Bouchard. Coming up in this week's programme, a string of Chinese-based PB manufacturers revise quarter three forecasts on weak market dynamics. First, solar and sun power reorganise and refocus. And why GT Advanced Technologies is bucking revenue trend for equipment suppliers. First today, as the quarterly financial season is now upon us, a string of Chinese-based PV manufacturers have revised downwards their third quarter guidance. Weak market dynamics leading to lower shipments, inventory impairments and rapidly falling module prices. Squeezing margins were cited by Yingli Green, Trina Solar, China Sunergy and Rena Solar as being the reason behind these revisions. Third quarter financial results from high-profile PV manufacturers First Solar and Sun Power were announced over the last few days, with both companies highlighting the need for refocusing and reorganising their businesses. A change in senior management at First Solar and the return to the CEO role by Chairman Michael Ahern will see the CADTEL thin film leader pursue new and emerging markets primarily outside those already served by solar subsidies. SunPower has made the decision to cut cell production by 20% to reduce inventory levels and reduce manufacturing costs by 15% by the end of 2012. The company has also implemented a reshuffle in senior management positions. And we recently reported on the plight of struggling thin film firm Energy Conversion Devices, which postponed its financial conference call and has idled all of its manufacturing facilities. Temporarily laying off around 400 employees, ECD had already made workforce cuts and reduced its production to barely 5 megawatts, while President and CEO Mark Morelli resigned back in May. Weakness in its key European markets and stiff competition were said to be behind the latest restructuring efforts. Overcapacity at PV manufacturers is also starting to impact equipment suppliers. Equipment sign-off delays have led to significantly lower than expected sales in the third quarter for Roth & Rao, leading to the companies having to record a one-off charge of 58 million euro. Meyerberger, which recently acquired the firm, has ceased control transfer proceedings with the company. But this is not the case for all companies at the moment. One company bucking the trend is GT Advanced Technologies. With sales intact and an equipment order backlog still above 2 billion US dollars, the company is weathering the storm better than most. According to SolarBuzz, GTAT remains well positioned to hold up under the near-term collapse of the crystalline silicon ingot to module capacity freeze. Besides having an emerging revenue stream in the form of the sapphire market for LEDs, GTAT benefits from a tier 1 customer base in solar that includes both polysilicon and ingot manufacturers, a business structure that's becoming more and more common in the industry. GTAT is also expected to benefit from the emergence of a technology bicycle, with its high CZ continuous flow, Chokrowski growth technology and monocast furnaces launching next year. And finally, can China compete against the US for the title of holder of the largest PV project pipeline? The growth of the PV project pipeline in the US has been one of the key developments this year, especially in light of the shrinking subsidies in the once all-important European market. SolarBuzz recently cited the US pipeline as standing at 24 gigawatt, and over the past few days the firm's figures have shown that the PV project pipeline in China has now reached 16 gigawatt. According to the report, 195 projects with a total capacity of over 1.8 gigawatts will be installed in China within 2011, closely matching the forecasted installed capacity for the US this year. Well, that's it from us for another week. Detailed coverage of the latest developments in the PV industry can be viewed on the PV Tech website in both English and Chinese. Be sure to watch next week for the latest in PV news updates, reviews and opinions.